I saw pictures of that clown stepping foot on that sacred ground being a phony and a fake. I decided I better YouTube your fucking ass. Kimo was a Navy SEAL for 11 years. And uh, in 2011, he suffered a, a stroke. I'm sure James knew this day would come. I'm sure he is shocked at how long he got away with this guy's. As many people as I contacted who were lavishing this clown with service dogs, special bicycles so he could compete, wheelchairs. They flew him all over the country, lavished him with his hotels, plane fare, food, booze, everything. And they flew him to uh, France, ride to recovery, and ignored what I said about him to step foot on the hollowed ground that is uh, the invasion of Normandy for its anniversary. And it offends the shit out of me. I called this guy a fake a long time ago and I'm calling him one now. It's my dad gave up his life for her and he's just a kind man. And he went through so much in that war. I don't know how all this ties in, but it's just part of what I've been through in my life. But, uh, I don't like the steel and valor. I don't like this asshole to be anywhere near Normandy. James Kimo Akaka is a disabled Hawaiian dude from a stroke. And nobody would be paying a shitting bit of attention to this clown if he wasn't claiming to be a Navy SEAL for 17 years that served on SEAL Team 2. And I don't fucking remember you. I also checked your name in the SEAL database and it doesn't show up. And I've talked to his former shipmates that say he was an E3 in the Navy and an underachieving uh, PUD while he was in there. Spent a few years in the Navy. Should have been good enough for him. My dad stormed the beaches of Normandy. And uh, he stormed the beaches of Normandy with a whole lot of friends. And uh, he lasted throughout that war. And there were only three or four of them left in the end. So during the summers, uh, he would take me and my sister around to see his buddies. And uh, one in particular, Lewis Herloin, was his best buddy. And he had lost his leg in a foxhole with my dad. And so I would see my dad uh, get teary-eyed. Um, my dad had wonderful friends all over the place. But it was something about when him and Lewis would get back and sit on that back porch and start talking about those days in Normandy. Um, they got teary-eyed every time they had to say goodbye to each other. And what's chemo do when he gets out? Starts working the restaurant circuit uh, as a cook in one restaurant and then opens Aloha Joe's uh, mobile food truck in Hawaii. He has really, really, truly been an inspiration to all of us. I tell you who's of inspiration to all are the guys that get up every day and get dressed and drive into that SEAL compound and do their job. And there is no shortage of shit bags like this that are ready to stand in line and steal that valor. Even though he cannot talk, I know what he wanted to do. The back of this picture says Belgium, 1945. Start to finish, he went through that war. Band of Brothers, Infantry, First Army. And when he died, we found a couple of his bronze stars he had never told us. Awards. He had no. never mentioned a word. I didn't know really what he had all done. But. He was a badass. I appreciate all of the generosity that was bestowed on this piece of shit because you find people believed him to be a Navy SEAL. The thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that were spent on this guy. Only because of that claim, the generosity for our Special Forces guys and SEALs is, uh, is overwhelming. And there is no shortage of clowns ready to capitalize on that and steal you people blind.
unfortunate. But I don't mind telling you, you made a big mistake dealing with that chemo. And I hope you all go after it as vigorously as I am. When he came back from uh, Normandy, and I was just a little, little girl, my father came down with leukemia. And back in the day, it was uh, sort of like AIDS was. When it first came out, nobody knew anything about cancer, so they put him in a um, cancer research laboratory in Oak Ridge, Virginia, I mean, Tennessee, and just doused him with unbelievable amounts of radiation. Uh, he went from 90 pounds um, to one day going to see my mother, and I mean, my mother went to see him, and he sat up in bed. He was eating a bowl of jello, and there wasn't a trace of cancer in his body anywhere, so that's sort of a miracle in, in my family there. Uh, my sister and I never knew where we were going to wake up. We were sort of passed around throughout my parents' friends uh, to watch us so that she could be with my dad. So. So we'd make friends with the little girls that were down there with cancer and we would go in and the bed would be made up and okay we knew that that little girl had made it and it just sort of continued on so it was a it was sort of a hard childhood in that respect growing up thinking that your dad's gonna die